say man, surely we are charged in a great way of this morning to hold to the hand of God as was stated, it is a hand that shall never change. God's hand will never leave you out of his own words. He says, I will never leave you, neither will I ever forsake you. So we are led to know that that we can trust in the unwavering, the unfaltering hand of God. We thank God for each and every one of you this morning. We pray, we pray and we trust uh, that your week has been enjoyable and we pray that we will be able to share with you this morning something that will bless you and carry you as we look forward to an upcoming week. Uh, we have been talking about facing giants and how do you handle the giants that you face, that you encounter in life. And we have been looking at the children of Israel as we have looked at 1 Samuel chapter 17 and the children of Israel have found themselves battling an, an age-old arch enemy in the Philistines and their battles with the Philistines have been give and take. Uh, sometimes they win a battle and then uh, sometimes the Philistines win a battle. It's, it's like that in our lives. Uh, sometimes we, we win and sometimes we lose. Sometimes we're successful and sometimes we're not as successful as we would like to be. Uh, we, we have setbacks. We have things that upset our purpose along the way. And in the midst of that, we have giants that we have to fight. And so the Philistines have pulled out a giant that the Bible calls a champion. Uh, so he's not just a fighter. He's not just an ordinary fighter. And, and he's not the first giant to ever walk the face of the earth. But, but he's, he's, he's a force to be reckoned with. And so the scripture shows us uh, this conflict and, and hopefully we're able to see uh, this conflict reflected in our lives and, and, and hopefully we're able to see uh, or, or to gain or to glean from the scripture how we should approach uh, such conflict. Uh, in our previous lesson, uh, we looked at a couple of doctrinal points, one being uh, that giants have a way of resisting God. Uh, we can see the pride in this man, Goliath, and the question uh, that we have to ask you or you should ask yourself is, uh, do you have a giant of pride uh, that's in yourself? Uh, this warring uh, that takes place in your members, we see that with these people and we see that with this giant, uh, he has a way of, of resisting God. And so you should question yourself, do you resist God in your own life? Amen. Uh, because if you are resisting God, then the giant that you're fighting is yourself. Uh, it's internal, and, and you still have to fight that giant. Giants in your life attack God, not you. Uh, take that and, and, and recognize that for your life. Uh, that if you have conflict in your life, and you have people in your life that you have conflict with, it's not personal. Amen. That's hard. That's difficult for us to embody, isn't it? It's not personal. Yeah, sinners are just going to do what sinners are going to do. Amen. Uh, evil is just going to do what evil is going to do. Evil workers, the Bible tells us, evil men shall wax worse and worse. What is the scripture telling us? It's not going to get better. The giants will keep on coming. And then, uh, the other doctrinal point that we made was speak to the giants in your life. Don't, don't, don't just let a giant lie there. Don't, don't just let a giant uh, have rule over your life. Speak, uh, but more than that, speak so that they move. Or, or speak so that you have change in your life. 
and a change in your surroundings. First Samuel chapter 17 is where we will revisit this morning. And verse number 10 of the Bible says that uh, the Philistine said, and if you look back at verse number 4, the Philistine that they are referring to is Goliath. So uh, Goliath has been presented to them and Goliath is this one that they are championing, uh, championing to fight all of their battles. So their champion comes out and their champion says, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Yes, we did that. Not only do I defy that army, I defy that God. Uh, we have some giants that are like that in, in our world today. Uh, giants that defy uh, the church of God. Uh, giants that defy the people of God. Uh, giants that defy that word of God and, and how do you act or how do you react uh, when you meet that giant. And that giant, I like this phrase that he used. He says, give me a man. Give me a man uh, that we may fight together. And we have to read that and we have to see that we have to understand this, that we are being called out. Amen. Amen. We live in a world where there are giants and you're being called out. You're being called to the carpet. The giants are standing up in your face and they want to know what you're going to do about it. You call yourself a Christian? Who do you think you are? Break you away from your faith. Okay. And this giant is 
there. Yeah, the term is kothad. And kothad means to be shattered. Amen. You ever been there before? It means to be broken. Yeah. Yeah, the giants in your life are working and they want to break you down. You ever been there? You ever been to the point where you felt like you were so low, you felt like, I can't go any lower. Right. Just when you think you can't go any lower, and just when you think it can't get any worse, the long comes something else. You ever been there before? Oh, yeah. And here's a giant that's able to take people uh, who are supposed to be people of God Get, get torn. It might 
And in verse number 10, the scripture says, that Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight. Saul and Israel heard these words. This Philistine, they were dismayed. They were broken. They were greatly afraid. The Philistine, in verse number 16, he drew near. Morning and evening. And he presented himself 40 days. Morning? What are you saying, preacher? He, he, he's not just going to call you out and leave. Amen. You get called out, you think he's going away just because you don't want to fight. You think it's stopped just because you say, well, I'm not going to say anything? No. You think it's over just because you buried your head, your head in the sand? Uh oh You think it's over just because you folded your hands and you refused to engage? No. No, it's not over. You know what? We encounter in our lives personal giants. But those giants don't just aggravate your life. Those giants are content to aggravate the world. His doctrinal point number two. For that, for that cause, giants must be confronted. Amen. A giant must be confronted. You have to engage. Right. You have to fight. Man. You have to do something. Yes, sir, right? You doing nothing is not an option. Yeah. God help us. The world that we live in is a result of God's people doing nothing. Okay. Come on. You got called out and you did nothing. Amen. What do, you, what, do you, what, what do you mean, preacher? Well, you know, uh, you, well, you know, they, you can't do it. You got called out. What was the lady name that, that, that got your prayer out of school? Oh, Madeline or something? Uh huh. Oh, you remember that, right? One lady stood up and called all you Christians out. You did nothing. And they say, well, you know, I mean, it's law, and they, they make the law. Who picked the lawmaker? Who picks the lawmakers? You do? Those of you who vote. Did you vote? Do you vote? And you're trying to be nice. That's right, man. 
You, you have to be careful. Amen. You know, I, I, are, you, are you watching the news? Do you watch the news? Oh, yeah. Uh, some people say, I don't like to watch the news because everything is something bad. Because the world you live in is bad. Turn off the TV. Yes. You're not, you're not here doing yourself a favor by not ignoring it. Okay. Amen. It's still there. You need to turn it on because if you don't turn on your television and look at that television and look at the news, you're going to be like some of these ignorant people in the world that say, well, the world is basically good. No, it's not. Okay. So your television is really showing you how confrontational the world you live in is. You know, we, we're in pandemic and we have corona. I, I'm looking at the television and there are some companies. Now listen, I, I, I'm not telling you what to do. Whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, your business. God bless you. Walk in faith. You want me to pray for you? I'm praying for you. Want me to pray with you? I'm praying with you. Trust God, believe in God. There are some places and some people saying it's mandatory. All right now. You got to get the shot. If you don't get the shot, you can't work here anymore. Okay? Hmm. And some people saying, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, good job, uh, airline company, good job, uh, good job. That doesn't sound strange to you? That doesn't sound a little Revelation 17 to you? That doesn't sound a little, everybody who don't take the mark of the beast can't buy, sell, or trip. That doesn't sound a little odd to you? That doesn't, you're going you're gonna to make somebody, you big man, you're going to stand up and make somebody take the shot. Now watch this. Some people say, yeah, yeah, that's right. The same person who says, you better take the shot, says, now wait a minute. You can't make that woman have a baby. It's her body. And she got the right to, she got the right to choose. Wait a minute. Come on, hold up, hold up, hold up. That makes sense to you? Oh. That sounds right. She can kill a life in her body if she wants to. But you can't, no, you, you, you put this in your body. I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just saying it, it doesn't sound quite right to me. Sounds odd. What are you going to do about it? you going to do about it? Every day you're being called out. Here's some questions. Are you confronting the giants in your life? Are you confronting giants in the lives of others? And are you confronting giants in the world? You know, sometimes we're just busy. We get so busy. We get so busy. We don't do this, say it all. You know, sometimes we're, we're, we're reading in the scripture and we see this term, say it all. You ever seen that term before? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, 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 we understand all of the words except say it all. It's an old Hebrew term. I like this term because it means stop. Pause and think about that. Oftentimes, uh, we see this term in the songs because in their songs, uh, uh, we, we come to understand or come to think that that this was a musical direction uh, that was given to singers. And uh, sorry, I think this is big. Sometimes I'm teaching singers, and I'm saying. You ought to sing the 
notes, but I don't really think you understand what you're singing about. Amen. I need to charge church people in that same way because sometimes you're singing the notes, but you don't really know what you're singing about. Amen. Amen. I, I can tell by the way I'm listening to I can tell by the way you sing. You, you're singing the words, amen, but you don't know what you're singing about. And every now and again, I hear somebody in the church get it. Because every now and again, somebody can't help but clap their hands. You get it. You understand. You know what? We understand words. Words have more meaning for us when we're going through something. Amen. Words have more meaning for us when we've been through something. Words, words, these words have more meaning for us when they have a real, true life application. Amen. And so, as a musical direction, uh, sometimes the writers of the scripture would say to those who were singing, pause, he's just a writer, to the musical director, pause, make these people stop and think. And so what well, what the scripture calls for and what the music calls for is silence. Be quiet. And think. And we become so accustomed to noise that silence makes us uncomfortable. about our world and, and having to think about what's going on sometimes makes us uncomfortable. Let, let me share with you a couple of things that sometimes I used to teach a class uh, uh, to some, some young, young men, mostly young guys wanted to take this class. We talked about songwriting. One of my focuses is, you know, in order to be a good songwriter, you have to be a great thinker. You have to be observational. The greatest songs, the greatest songs that we have, they reach out and, and they connect with our world. And more than that, they talk about things that are timeless. They talk about the things that touch the human condition. That no matter who you are, no matter where you are, it resonates with people and it resonates throughout all the time. It's an old song. Uh, I made no secret of the fact that I like Marvin Gaye. Okay? Some of you might be mad. I might can't be your preacher no more. Okay, I've seen your record collection. Amen. Me and you are all right. Amen. It's, it's, it's Marvin Gaye's Inner City Blues. Heard that song before? Think about this. Rockets, moonshots, why don't you spend it on the have-nots? You get the question? You spend so much money to send a man to the moon. What about the man you stepped over in the gutter? Isn't that a great question? Isn't that a great question? You're taking all of the shots at the moon. Spend all of your money on moon, but the man in the gutter, no care, no regard. We don't even want to think about him. No. We don't even want to think about her. Money, we make it. Yes, sir. Before we see it, you take it. You take it. Yes. Now, everybody in the office say amen. <laughs> It resonates with life, does it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he, and I like his refrain. You live in life, make you want to holler. Throw up my hands. 
than what isn't that what we read this morning? Yes. They, they, the giants confront them and they do what? I just give up. Life will do you that way. The confrontation of giants will do you that way. It will make you want to give up. Mr. Gay has another song. What's going on? Yes. Mother. Yes. Mother. Mm -hmm. Too many of you crying. Why are you crying? What's going on in your life? What happens in the lives of your children that makes you cry? Brother, brother, brother. Too many of you dying. Does it break your heart? Marvin Gaye wrote this song in 1971. What year are we in? 50 years ago. Young men dying in the street. 50 years later. Young men dying in the street. Picket lines. Picket signs. People still marching. Don't punish me with brutality. Policemen still beating people for marching. 50 years later, same thing. Talk to me. If you talk to me and you can see what's going on. What are some of the giants he's talking about in the song? Sadness. You have sadness in your life? Heartbreak? Yes. Your heart ever been broken? Disappointment? Yes. Death? Yes. Loss? War? Oh, here's another line. Father, Father, we don't need to escalate. War is not the answer. Now I'm telling you, I, I have to stop and think about that. War is not the answer. War is not the answer. I had to ask myself, do I truly believe that? Amen. Because, because when I went to when I went to, to basic training, the training I received was Son. Son. Drill Sergeant asked me, why are you here? Oh, I'm here for school money. Sir, you are not here. You didn't join this man's army for school money. You know what he told me? You're here to be a natural born killer. You are here for me to teach you how to kill, the art of killing. Okay? And Martin says, war is not the answer. I had to, I had to think about that. Is that right? War is not the answer, he says, for only love can conquer hate. It's a great lyric, isn't it? Amen. I'll tell you why it's so great. Because Jesus said the same thing. Amen. As much as I love Marvin, Jesus said it first. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, love your Jesus said, those that curse you, you heard my feelings, Jesus. <laughs> this way you broke me, Jesus. Jesus says, those that curse you, bless them. If he turned around after he cursed you out and asked you for something, Jesus says, give it to him. Jesus says, don't just give him what he asked for. If he asked for your shirt, Jesus says, give him your coat. What Jesus is saying, the only way to fix that great big giant is to show him what real love is. Amen. And he's talking about giants in the world, love and hate and Police brutality and 
be a kid and understand, we think that because we talked, we understood. No, no, no. Let's make sure you hear me. Can I share another song with you? Do you have time for this? I like rock and roll also. Amen. I know some of them saying, I don't see it, I can't disconnect. Blues and rock and roll, yeah. Bruce Hornsby wrote a song some years ago that said, it's the way it is. Standing in line, marking time, waiting for the welfare dying. Because can't buy a job. There are people today still need welfare? Yes. Amen. There are still people today saying you ought to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Bruce says, no, there's some people that can't get a job. Then a man in a silk suit hurries by as he catches an old poor lady's eyes and he turns to her and say, get a job. Mm -hmm. Say, hey little boy, you can't go where the other kids go. You don't look like they do. Amen. I said, hey old man, how can you stand to think that way? Did you really think about it before you made the rules? He said, son, that's just the way it is. Some things will never change. That's just the way it is. But he says, oh, don't you believe that? We have giants in our world today saying to us, He cuts the spear in half. He burns the chariots in the 
I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, he said again. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Say, love. Stop. Pause. And think about that. That no matter how big our giants are, God is bigger. The problems of the world can be solved. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Okay, this is the problem. Only three people in this room believe that. All right, man. You see, you see our problem? Yes. Our problem is not the world. You're the problem. Stop and think about that. If you don't even believe that it can be done, think about that. The problems of our world can be solved. What are you saying, preacher? Let me rephrase that for you. Giants can be defeated. And it took a little old boy named David to show you that. It took a little boy named David to show great big warriors that. And I'll try it again. The problems in our world can be solved. Do you believe that? Yes. yes. All right, about three more people believe it. Good. <laughs> this is interesting. If we don't believe that, there are some people in the world who are trying to work to that end. Do you care to join them? The Copenhagen Consensus Center is a place that was based in Copenhagen, but they are a think tank. They are based in America now. It's a group of thinkers who come together to say, how can we help to solve the problems of the world? Do you ever get around to asking yourself that question? What can I do to help? And is there, is there, there belief that oh, the problems of the world can be, can be solved? Yeah, they say, so what are some problems that we can solve? We can solve, we can solve the problem of war, armed conflict, chronic disease. People don't have to die from these ailments they have, educational disparities, infectious disease, uh, a poor population growth, biodiversity, killing off plant, plant life and animal life in forests, climate change, hunger and malnutrition, natural, na uh, natural disasters and how we react to them, water and sanitation. These are issues of our world that can be solved. Yeah, they go on. We can end poverty. We can end hunger. Here, these are facts. There's enough food in the world for there to be not one hungry person on the face of the earth. Yes, God is good. There are 8 billion people on the face of the earth, and God has provided food for every last one of them. He's that kind of God. There's no reason for anybody to be in poverty. Amen. There's no reason, none at all. There's no reason for you to live so good and somebody on the opposite side of town. We ain't even talking about the other side of the world. Amen. We're talking about in your city. Amen. There are some people who, just people, man shouldn't be this way. Not if he's going to be a reflection of the God that created him. Yes, sir. We can improve nutrition, sustainable agriculture, promote well-being for all ages. Amen. You can, you can learn a lot about a society based on how they treat their children and their elderly. Amen. We can't throw people away because we, we're done with them. Amen. Amen. We can't throw them away because we have no more use for them. Ensure equability and quality education. Achieve greater equality. Ensure water and sanitation for all ages. Promote sustainable economic growth and productive employment and build resilient and innovative infrastructure. I say we gotta have good schools. Amen. I, I, I have a personal, personal issue with that. I have to have good schools. 
In order for us to have good schools, we have to have good parents. Amen. Amen. We have to have good grandparents. Yes. We have to have good aunties. Amen. We have to have good uncles. Amen. We have to have good families in order to build strong schools and to build strong institutions that work. These are all things that we should do and we should we should we should be we should be involved in. These are things that we should stop and think about. These are things that should cause us to just stop. Think about it. And then get involved. Amen. So, what should we do? Or in particular, what should you do? Confront world giants. Yeah, last week our application point was you should confront your giants. Yeah, you should confront the giants that, that, that you deal with on a personal basis. And then after you get done with yourself, turn your attention elsewhere. That's godly, that is divine. God has placed us here to change and make a difference in our world. How do you know that, preacher? Because Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. Jesus says, I have placed you here for that cause. On uh, 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 one occasion, Jesus' disciples said to him, you remember this? Jesus, all these people are following you and they're hungry. You need to send them away. And Jesus says, well, I'm not going to send them away. You feed them. I'm not, I'm not gonna. I'm not, you know, you know, there are people who have problems with God. Their problem with God is some of the things that we talked about today. You ever met those people before? Oh, if there was a God, why is there suffering in the world? Were, you're the reason there's suffering in the world. You think suffering is a God problem? No, our world is a you problem. A couple of years ago, I read a quote by a Catholic priest. He said, I wish God would concede me his omnipotence for 24 hours. He said, if God would do that, I would fix all of the problems in the world. If he would give me all of his power for 24 hours, I'd fix everything that we say is wrong with the world. He says, but if he gave me his wisdom also, I'm sure I'll leave everything just like he has it. Isn't that good? If God fixed everything in the world, what you gonna do? <laughs> That's really what we're saying, isn't it? We want God to fix it so I don't have to. I don't have to do anything. Don't it aggravate you when you get to the, to the red light? <laughs> See, okay, the people that's laughing is me. <laughs> don't it aggravate you when you get to the red light and there's somebody standing on the corner with a sign? And then it looks like they're about to walk over to your car. <laughs> and you're looking at the light saying, change, change, change. <laughs> what does that say about us? What does that say about us? I'm with you now. Come on, I'm with you. There's a reason I know how that story goes. <laughs> I won't have to be confronted with that if God just fixes it. 
I won't have to worry about that if God just fix it. Right? And God is so funny. As soon as that light changed, I get stopped by the next bed. Like, they go to the person on that corner. <laughs> I say, God is saying, it's not going away. Jesus said, I already told you, son. The poor, you are going to have with you. What are you saying? You're going to always have a battle to fight. You're going to always have giants confronting you. You can't bury your head in the sand. You can't act like it doesn't exist. Get your battle gear on and fight. And if we haven't been doing that, God is calling us to confront giants because they're calling you out question we have to ask is how do you answer the call and if we have not answered the call God is calling us to do just that right here right now today we enlist you to do that as we together stand and sing a song of encouragement uh.